And there is some debate at Austin City Hall about solar energy contracts, which could ultimately impact your electric bill. So this is going to hit you in the pocket for sure. The Austin Monitor is here to explain. This is Mike Kanan. Good morning to you, Mike. Good morning, Sally. How are you? I'm good. Explain good. to our viewers what this is all about, how this is impacting them. Sure. So the, the big question is how much solar power do we buy in the next you know, in the next basically month, mm -hmm. and how much do we buy over the next 25 years? Okay. And it boils down to 600 megawatts versus 200, 600 megawatts from the, which is the, the number being pushed by the advocacy community, 250, 300 megawatts by the utility. And the bottom line question is will solar prices rise over the next, you know, X amount of time, and how much money will it cost ratepayers? Uh, if this utility locks itself into a 600 megawatt deal that expands out over 25 years. What is, uh, why are they different numbers here? Why 600 megawatts versus 300 megawatts? Sure. So the utility would elect to take, I think in this case, what might be defined as a more conservative approach. Okay. Where they buy slowly into a, an asset that they argue uh, is still not, it still hasn't reached sort of the, the where they think the prices could drop over the next few years. Um, and actually, uh, the general manager of the utility yesterday made, a, um, um, uh, made some news suggesting that, uh, indeed, a federal subsidy for solar power right. might not go away like it's expected to next oh, year. So okay. that would leave prices theoretically in a, in a, in a, in a more affordable sort of realm um, and might justify uh, purchasing less now and some more later. Okay, and so people watching at home are wondering, all right, Mike, how is this going to impact my Austin energy bill that I get every single month? <laughs> so the, the question, the answer to that is we really don't know. I mean, if the, the argument from the advocacy community is that lock in the prices now because if the solar incentive goes away, we're going to have to pay more for solar down the line. The argument from the utility is if we lock in all of the prices now, we're going to miss out on any sort of price drop that might come over the next few years. It's like futures hedging. It's crazy stuff stuff. Um, it's, it is frankly above a lot of folks' heads. Uh -huh. And uh, for the bottom line for ratepayers is they could see, you know, uh, the utilities arguing that a conservative purchase will, will increase the bills only about $3 um, when they make that purchase. And they, I think, would argue that it, they, they just, well, they can't make an argument for what might happen because we just don't they know what prices are going to go. Right. Yeah. Okay. So do we know what council's going to do? Do they have the ultimate say on this one? The council gets the ultimate say. Okay. We don't know exactly what they're going to do, but it's clear that some folks are starting to get this picture that it might might be a better idea to go more conservative but you know you never know folks really do want Austin Energy to be out there on the you know bleeding edge of, of uh, alternative fuel right and they have been historically and I think that the advocacy community would really like them to stay there okay Mike Cannon with the Austin Monitor thank you